on the screen right now, there's this study, paraxanthine supplementation increases muscle mass, strength, and endurance in mice. Paraxanthine significantly increased forelimb grip strength by 17% and treadmill exercise by 39%. That's almost half, okay? That's mm. almost half the performance. So beyond just the neuroprotective stuff that I'm stoked to get into, there's also a cognitive strength benefit, mind to muscle benefit, actual strength benefit, cardiovascular benefit to this. I wonder for people that have just only done caffeine their whole life, you know, is this a hard transition to do? Is there like a weaning off period when you, when you get off of coffee and you go to one of its, cause it's a metabolite, correct? Mm -hmm. It's yeah. one of the metabolites. I wonder, have you guys had that come up in conversations where people are like, I, I really miss my cup of coffee or are they just stoked about the paraxanthine? Uh, on the contrary, I think like what you find is as someone, I drink a coffee every day, right? I love the flavor of a coffee. It's a ritual and I have a cup of coffee every morning. If I go one day without that cup of coffee, I've got a headache and I feel terrible. I drink an update now, one or two, depending on how I'm going throughout the day. Um, as a replacement to the four other coffees I typically would have been drinking. Yeah. And uh, I'll update vis-a-vis -vis paraxanthine consumption. <laughs> and uh, what, what I find is I can go a day or a week without update, um, primarily because we don't sell it in stores all over the world. So if I'm traveling, it's you know hard to get. Um, and I don't have a problem whatsoever. Um, and so people, you know, to, to use paraxanthine to wean off caffeine is actually really effective. And one of the things that we continue to hear from people who are trying to cut down their caffeine consumption and, you know, use update instead is when they go back to drink that cup of coffee, it feels much dirtier than how it felt, you know, prior to even consuming paraxanthine. What do you mean it feels dirtier? Like, how it, so? It's, uh, the, the way I like to describe it is like caffeine is gonna provide you with that jolt of overstimulation uh -huh. and then you crash and yeah. it's gonna make your stomach churn whilst you're doing it. If it's after lunch, it's even worse. Mm. <laughs> and uh, and then you're gonna, you know, it's gonna raise your uh, anxiety levels. So all in all, you're you're just not feeling great after you consume it, even though you get that kind of acute boost of energy. Yeah. Whereas with with Update and Parazanthine, uh, what we're finding is you don't get an overstimulating jolt of energy. In fact, if you're looking for that, you know, this is probably not for you, but if you actually want to feel motivated, focused and alert for a sustained period of time without having, you know, to run to the bathroom, without um, also, you know, particularly like coffee, milk, you don't have to digest any of that. So again, your stomach's feeling better. Um, and if there's no crash, it doesn't raise your anxiety levels at all. Um, what's actually really cool is if you're someone who's a slow metabolizer, so, you know, Sean is a good example, uh, probably yourself, but, but take someone who is worse than both of you. So like someone who can't even consume a tea, right? Unless it's decaffeinated, they can drink this and consume infinity paraxanthine and won't have any anxiety, won't have jitters, won't crash, mm. won't be up all night. Um, and, and that's really amazing. One way that I've judged it for myself, and you might know the science on this because I've always wanted to ask somebody this actually, every time I would drink an espresso or a coffee, I would get a histamine response. My nose would start getting all clogged and I have to blow. And it happens like clockwork now. So I don't know if that's like my different biochemical individuality or what, I'm sure it is. But when I drink the update, it doesn't happen. I don't, my nose doesn't mm. run. I'd be like working at the standing desk when I drank a coffee before and I'd have to go blow my nose. I don't have to blow my nose anymore. That That's real. So I don't yeah, know, what is that? A histamine receptor like being modulated actually has a lot to do with alertness. So like new vigil, uh, pro vigil, like those modulate. One of the mechanisms of action is modulating histamine. And that has a lot to do with feeling tired or alert. Like think Ooh. about how like a Benadryl can feel. Sure. Right? So- uh, Literally that, like drugs. <laughs> yeah, that, that can, uh, there can be like a kind of a tying to um, the catecholamine response with like any central nervous system stimulant. So that's where like you're getting, um, you know, adrenaline is epinephrine, noradrenaline would be norepinephrine, things like cortisol, dopamine. That's like the catecholamine response that's uh, stimulating the central nervous system. So it can be tied to that histamine response. Yeah. 
So when I'm, is that mean that my body is rejecting it when yeah, I have that response? Yeah, to some degree. To some degree, right? Yeah. And, and there's always in each person, you know, it's that whole neurons that fire together, wire together, like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know, over time, like these things get associated. Okay. Yeah. So my body's like, we're getting a down dump of caffeine. <laughs> we need to exit snot out of the nose. <laughs> It also could be that I've had major sinus issues my whole life, but actually I've tied an emotional piece to this. And Mm. this is my next question. I didn't even think about this till you guys sat down. I'm like, this is why I love podcasting because I just feel things in the moment that I believe other people need to see or need to hear. There's an emotional component to caffeine that I don't think people even realize. And I have felt it a lot in my life where I'll snap at my lady or I'll be short with my children. Like Mm. caffeine can turn people into fucking assholes for lack of a better term, like it can really make me in my own life in the past, like a jerk to be around. Yeah. I think what's needed is like an energy source here that's sustainable for society, but also doesn't impact our emotional intelligence. That is a big piece of this caffeine paradigm theme conversation. There's a lot of like, I'll, I'll let Daniel jump in a second, but like there's a lot of like scientific validity to that in that if you're worsening hrvs that's that's the marker or measure of resilience right so like if you don't have as much physiologic or mental resilience uh like with depression for example you have low bdnf low resilience right i used to stay in loops when i was very depressed like you can't like stuff comes up and you're like you know just pumping the brakes and screaming and pushing back because you just can't deal with it you don't have that centeredness you don't have the resilience and if you add to this that your blood pressure is up that your heart rate's mm-hmm. up that all these catecholamines are up and now you're not getting as good as sleep and this is a perpetual state of being where it reminds me of that like commercial in the 80s like i do drugs so i can do more work so i can do more drugs so i can do more work so i can do more drugs so i can do mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know the guy's like does cocaine and he's yeah. going around and around the room it's yeah. like that this is this is like that to the nth the degree like because you are not getting enough sleep you have sleep debt where am i gonna like make up for this caffeine caffeine causes more sleep debt how am i gonna make up for that caffeine it's like you stay in this loop and obviously when that's perpetual, your adrenals are going to be burnt out. Yeah. You know, you're just shot. You're shot physiologically. And of course, like this is going to be metabolically uh, taking a massive toll on you. Dude. And now you're going to start putting on weight because cortisol is consistently up mm-hmm. because you're always overstressed because you don't have enough what's called allostatic capacity, meaning a capacity to deal with stress. So this is like the, this is the, the loop that you're on. Wow. Okay. What a freaking roller coaster ride you just described. <laughs> no, and I can feel it in my own life in the past because literally, like the espresso that I have now, it's just a treat. Like it's not an everyday thing. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. In the past, when I would have it for more than a couple of days, um, it wouldn't work anymore. Mm-hmm, I would actually yeah. feel the the baseline, the bottom of the gas pedal would hit the floor, and no matter how much coffee I poured in, it wouldn't matter. It literally wouldn't matter, and it would actually make me more tired. Mm-hmm. Almost, I've heard of this too. If you have yep. too much caffeine you actually get tired. And so, yeah. you know, barring that, going back to the emotional intelligence piece, I'm curious now, because you guys have been on market for a, a year and a half, something like that, Yeah, year and a half. Where This is actually V2, which I'm excited to jam on because there's so many new things and things that got pulled out. And I don't know if that was based on customer feedback or just, you know, things in the lab that showed up. But on an emotional intelligence standpoint, What have you felt and seen personally and then also from all the audience members and the people that have actually been consuming the product? Are they less of an asshole? (laughs) (laughs) Anecdotally, yes. (laughs) Um, No, I I mean, I think the biggest part of this is, you know, to that cycle Sean was talking about earlier, you wake up, you're, you know, irritable. So you drink coffee to kind of fix that. Then coffee makes you anxious. Yeah. You're irritable. <laughs> you go to sleep, you have a bad night's sleep, and it's the same process. Or you might slam two beers to go to bed. It's like this which, which is even which is even uppers worse, and downers right? all day long. And uh with update, we're not finding that. People are having, firstly, a far more consistent experience, irrespective of whether they're fast or slow metabolizers. Yeah. Um and uh you there's also not this addictive property. Um, And Sean can get into the studies I've done, but like I said earlier, I can drink this twice a day and then I can go cold turkey for a week. And I don't have any kind of uh, withdrawal that I would from coffee. Yeah. 
this is so good because the only thing sustainable is something that doesn't hurt you in the long run. In other words, like the opportunity cost of coffee for, you said 60% of us to have issues metabolizing mm-hmm. or more. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's a huge opportunity cost for that. Like we're actually burning off parts of the engine we don't even realize. Exactly. Yeah. What, what are some of those parts of the engine that people are burning off with the proposed good use of caffeine but actually, if they were put under a microscope or they looked at their HRV or they tracked their aura or something, there's got to be some hidden deleterious stuff that's happening for people that are consuming caffeine that may not know it's actually breaking their engine in ways they're not aware of. Hey, if you love that clip you just saw, watch the full video. That clip was just a taste, just a piece, the tip of the freaking iceberg of what you just witnessed and what you just felt, click the link on this screen, subscribe to the podcast, click the link on this screen. If you're vibrating, if you're resonating, if you feel what I'm putting down.